there was a, 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 a time when resentment kicked in. Not for Allah, ever. Not one time, akhi, through this situation, when Allah, alhamdulillah, shukr. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm proud of myself for this. I've never said Allah, why? Ever said Allah, why? But where the resentment kicked in for a minute was for certain people that I know. And I tell you why, akhi, I'm in a hospital bed, right? As I told you, I told you the state that I'm in, I'm soiling myself, I'm vomiting feces out my mouth. And I think about my brother Ali Banat, and I'm like, you know, he done, he went through what he went through. Um, he done, mashallah, he done what he needed to do in his life. May Allah accept it from him. Amen. When, when he passed away, what happened at most, at most, actually, for the next three weeks, at most, at most he got Facebook. Um, sorry, stuff for I should take that back. People, mashallah, built wells in his names. Mashallah, tabarakallah. And that's, that's fantastic. But in terms of, like, people. Most, 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 most common, most common, right? Like the most regular the, thing that happened. The most common, it, it was like Facebook posts. Right. Posting a video, posting a status, or whatever the case may be. And I said to myself that, I, it's almost as if I could see the Facebook posts that are going to be, It's almost I could see the Facebook post and I'm like, I said to myself, like, I don't want no Facebook posts. If I die, I don't, I don't want people to post on, on Facebook. People are going to do it. Even if I say right now, Akhi, if I pass away, I don't want no Facebook posts. And all of the people that see this video, see hear me saying this, people will still do it. All right. So I don't have no control over that. I don't want it. It's not something that I want anybody to do. But people do it. And this is their way of like, commemorating somebody and I'm like to some of the people that I, I, I consider to be close to me I don't want no Facebook post come and see me because I might die right now you feel what I'm saying Akhi? so when there was certain individuals or brothers who I deemed to be close that didn't come to see me during that time where no one knew it was touch and go Akhi. it was touch and go I said like if I pass away you're never gonna see me again in this life ever facts we may see some we, we may see some we may see each other in the afterlife but that's not even a guaranteed why wouldn't you wanna, I, I couldn't get my head around it why wouldn't you want to come and see me but you, you definitely want to go and send up you know what i mean you're going to come to you might you, you might come to my janaza but you don't want to come see me so i was battling some demons i came out of that hospital resentful you know i came out of resent uh, family members Akhi. i never saw some family members so i was really bitter I was sick, weak, destroyed, depressed, and bitter. And that's a terrible concussion. Dark mm -hmm. place, Echi, man. It's a dark place. And what eventually happened is, as I started to get better, and my mind started to get back to normal, those people that were there for me, physically, those people that I know, those people that I don't know that come to check me, actually, there were people that were coming to see me in the hospital. I, I couldn't even tell you their names. They just saw the story, they found out where I was, they come to see me. A student that I, I, I met in Medina, he was from Birmingham, I think he actually lives in another country, he was in the UK, he come to see me. So I'm like, how is this possible? Like these guys, I don't really know you guys like, like, like that, like I've known this person for 10, 15 years. What, what's causing him to come visit and you not to come visit? The shaitan is my best friend right now. And all of like the, the worst possible things you can think of, like, right, do they want me to die? Is that what they want? Is it? What is it? At face it, I was confused. And in that time, I don't think I'm ready to speak about this now. But there was a good brother. His name's Fawad from Brixton Masjid area. He's like an older uncle to a lot of my generation of brothers. And, you know, he's the first one. If you're sick, he's coming to visit you with the Zamzam or his, his wife's. Uh, soup that she makes mashallah to make sure you're right and um i remember on one occasion right i had you know those those things that you put over your eyes when you when you're um on, on the plane or you're trying to get some sleep right those little sh those shutter things i remember i was sleeping and i had those over my eyes and the brother he came and i was I still had the thing over my eyes but i had my family around me my wife was there my mom was there and whatnot and he came with the zam zam and everything else and I was awake, but I had to, I was trying to get some some rest. I just remember him putting his hand, or either on my forehead. Yeah, I think it was on my forehead, or on my chest, or it could have been on my belly where the 
the, the, the illnesses and he started doing his adhkar and making ruqia and I had a mini reaction you know later on you know maybe in a future episode we can speak about that because that day is still really really thin because it, it, there was um, multiple times I had the ruqia done that um, you know there were, there were there were there were some you know concerning concerning um, change or things that happened at the time but anyway I was bitter bro I was really bitter and it was as I got better I started to realize that when somebody's like sick like I was and people don't reach out or people don't come to see you it's not because they don't love you or they don't care you know it's because some p different people deal with trauma in different ways Sorry. do you know what I mean some people may not want, want not have wanted to see me like that but I was taking it personally mm. but it wasn't it wasn't anything personal I don't know who's getting up in the third part of the, of the, of the night and beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure me and to make it easy for me and my family. I don't know. You with me? But at the time, I wasn't looking at it from that perspective. And this goes to show the importance in life of having a good, positive perspective in life. You know, because I've looked at myself and said, well, during my, you know, 15, 16 years as a Muslim, I have heard of brothers being in hospital, but I haven't gone to visit. But I've made dua for them or, yeah, at the very least, I felt like bad inside like oh, oh Allah makes it easy for him what's stopping that brother from looking at me and saying you know and, and painting me with that same brush that I'm now painting other people with but it was so difficult Akhi. I'm telling you man it was so difficult until the point where I just had to let it go because it was consuming me and the more I held on to it the more I was becoming bitter and resentful and it was just eating me up it was mashing me up Akhi. so I had to let go of that and um I learned a lot from that lesson there. I learned a, a, a lot, a, a lot from that, and you know. And I tell you something. Another beautiful thing on the back of all of this. Somebody's commitment to their faith, right? How religious they come across, you know, how religious they are, is something that's between them and Allah. How much a person grows his beard, obviously, is important. How a person observes having their ankles, uh, their trousers above their ankles, again, which is important. And there are other elements of the deen which are important on a um, face for face value, what you see on the, the outside of things, right? But I noticed that a lot of people that were showing me like crazy love are not necessarily the most quote unquote practicing people. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and again, I'm going through a transition just coming out of Medina a year out you know um, and I'm seeing that you know what like obviously we're supposed to be religious and we're supposed to be dedicated to our faith and stuff like that but I'm not judging anybody because everybody's got good in them just like everybody's got bad and I just started to take the approach that I'm gonna choose and it's a choice to look for the good and where I can try to the best of my ability uh, to overlook the bad